In my opinion, Flexbox might be one of the most challenging aspects of React Native, especially since there are some slight nuances compared to the web browser CSS way that Flexbox works. If you feel comfortable with Flexbox, uh, feel free to continue on to the next lecture. Otherwise, stick around, and we're going to do a review of how we got our app looking the way it did. So first off, we're look we were working off of a mock where we had a pretty good idea of where we wanted to go. I highly recommend, if you're building your own application, at least pull out some pen and pencil, pull out a whiteboard, try to mark up exactly how you want to do things, and it'll really help you down the line. The next thing we did was we created a wrapper view for each of the major areas of our application. We had one view for the overall container, and then we divided uh, the, the container into two halves, the header and the footer. Inside of the header, we then assigned two views, one for the timer and one for the buttons. Next, we created a helper function that allowed us to add a border to each of these wrapper elements. The helper function is really great because we can color code our wrapper elements to match our mock. We did this because we don't have the ability, as we do in the web browser, to mouse over elements on the page here and get an idea of the full extent of any of these elements. It makes it easier to visually see the height and the width of each of these elements on the page. Next, we started st uh, styling our items. We first got our container to fill up the entire width of the page, height and width, by setting flex 1. Next, to get the, our items to expand to fill the rest of the page, we use the flex property on the header and the footer. Because the header and the footer are siblings, setting flex 1 on each of them caused each of them to occupy half of the screen. They took up the entire screen and then divided that space between the two of them. Once all of our items had the correct height, we worked on the button wrapper and the timer wrapper here. We wanted the timer wrapper to be slightly larger than the button wrapper, so instead of using flex 1 for both, we used flex 5 for the timer wrapper and flex 3 for the button wrapper. When we have two siblings, that both have the flex property, we add the two numbers together, and that forms a proportion of the area that each of them is going to take. The button wrapper had flex three out of three out of eight units, so it's currently occupying three eighths of the space on our screen. Next, our buttons start and lap had to be side by side on the screen. To do this, we changed the direction of our flex layout to, to row from the default of column. This means that our content will be laid out side by side as opposed to stacked on top. Once they were side by side, we put space in between them by using the justify content rule with the space around property. We then center them vertically using the align item center. Again, remember, align items and justify content change behavior based on whether or not the flex direction is set to the default of column or row. Because flex, uh, excuse me, because flex direction was set to row, align items of center caused our elements to move vertically as opposed to the usual horizontally. Finally, we center the timer here by setting the justify content and align items center on the timer wrapper. All right, so that was all a mouthful. Uh, if Flexbox still seems mysterious, uh, don't sweat it. Uh, I have found Flexbox and styling in React Native apps in general to be much more of an acquired skill, something where you kind of have to struggle with it a little bit before it really starts to click. At, the, at a minimum, I've hoped that I, I hope that I've at least set you down the right path here. So let's continue in the next section.